Yeah, I just wanted to introduce ourselves at Splice as the re-innovators of channel agnostic brand equitivity. Um, Aaron, is that good for buzzwords? How, how's that going? <laughs> um, so, not really, thank goodness. You were looking horrified. <laughs> Hiya! <laughs> Cannot, what? Um, I'm here to talk about wall-to-wall -wall media. I'm Rishad, I'm from Splice, and I'm also here to talk about um, breaking through the genocracy, what I'm calling the genocracy. One of these two people is me, uh, the other is my beloved friend and co-founder, Alan Soon. Um, this is exactly 100% of the company. We're two grumpy old dudes in, in Singapore, and we, Alan's been a career journalist, and I've been a product and design guy, and this is what we do. Uh, so we have a lot of verbs here. We help people build viable media startups, and we've got document, and design, and teach, and advise, and all these things, but we could just skip intro and move on, and we do that. There's some relevance and there's some making of money. Um, so, uh, quickly, we think that, so we come from a very opinionated place and we think that the business model has been transformed. Uh, you have to update this slide. I think it's for the past three, five decades. We've been trying to force fit old concepts into new round holes. And um, this is not working out so well, as we know. Uh, the biggest mistake that we're making is that we assume that there is this one single large audience. In fact, we refer to it as the audience quite often. Um, on the internet, however, we know that we're serving this audience of one. This guy said, the age of the gatekeepers is done, right? No more delivery trucks, we don't really need the satellite uplinks, we don't really need all of those, all of those gatekeeping mechanisms any longer. Um, what is the future of media? We, you know, so many conferences about the future of journalism and the future, well, I think, you know, we're actually already there. So we think it's centered around the user, it's based around their demand, and it's based around their interest. Um, we're pretty uh, convinced of this. We think that the economy is attention. We think that the currency is attention. And we need to be spotting patterns out there. And the patterns are, some of the patterns are, if we're listening carefully enough, we think that the user is saying, our separate user groups, uh, audiences, listeners, viewers, whatever you want to call them, it's, we think it's fairly interchangeable. I'll give you this if you give me that. I'll give you my attention, or sometimes my money, if uh, you solve this problem that I have. Um, and, it, and I think the key word there is specific. Perhaps my problem uh, is your business opportunity. We've done this over and over again. Uh, one of the things we do is we help little media organizations and large ones find their audiences, but also speak to their existing ones. Um, and we hear some pretty bizarre things. We, we did a little audience research thing with Puma Podcast in the Philippines, a five-year-old podcast company with many, many podcasts, and they were appalled when their users, focus group after focus group after focus group, told them, yeah, it's great you do podcasts, but we don't really care. We, you, you could make ball bearings, we don't care. It's like, what the hell, it's in our name. What are you, what are you saying here? You know, There was this identity crisis, and they were like, you create a safe space for us? The podcasts are your content, but the reason we listen is because politically, uh, the Philippines is a very, very polarized political scenario, and you create a safe space. Why do we come to you? We want to hang out with you, but can you make it possible for us to hang out with each other? How do we meet? How do we meet each other? How do you convene this space? It became a business opportunity. They used to jam, they discovered their, you know, they were musicians, they would hang out, eat pizza together. This became a huge, huge opportunity for them. But how do we get here? We started like this. 
It was simple, not so long ago. Then we mediated through social platforms, creators mediated through creative platforms, and now, here we are. You know, we've all been talking about this for a little while um, at, at Media Party. It's on demand, it's simultaneous, it's infinitely scalable. Media 4 is getting cheaper, It'll, it's in real time, any format, any style, and then so on and so forth. And the worry is, and the assumption is, that this is only about content. And that is a huge, huge concern. It will change everything, right? This is the everything bagel of media. It's everything, everywhere, all at once. Um, and it keeps on going, right? But the scarier thing, even scarier, is that it continues to serve this audience of one, but at scale, right? So you can just personalize over and over again, nonstop. So what do you do? The implications, and this is still like a work in progress, this list, the implications are all of these. There's a decline in the value of institutional media. But human, human curated services go to zero, but human content and the value and the curation goes up. Um, it becomes human IP versus machine IP. Uh, you could make it by a machine, but you could guarantee it by a human being. Um, fact checkers in the room, I'm really sorry. Uh, so maybe there is a way forward. And maybe we need to, we, we need to start redefining our, what we think about media and how we think about audiences and how people find us or need us. Maybe this is not a good definition of media. Let's start with what it isn't. We get stories like this all the time. Um, folks that want to spend their grant money doing this. I'm, I'm, I'm tempted to do this in a Kiefer Sutherland voice from the succession, you know. Uh, if anybody could do that for me, that would be awesome. Uh, you will get my t-shirt. Um, <laughs> must do a podcast, man. Um, or, you know, we're doing this many, this much content, and it's getting this many views. Let's drive more content so we get more views. And I worry that this whole thing is just an exercise in the lottery system. It's like throw spaghetti at the wall, let's figure out what stakes, and then spend all that money marketing it. But I'm, that w worries me, because we assume that there is one single kind of journalism, and we've codified it. We've codified it in our learning institutions, in our, in our newsrooms, in our, you know, in our forecasts, and our business plans. It, this cannot work. It doesn't, it doesn't exist, right? We really do think it's user-centered. It's driven by the demand of the user. It's based on the interests of the user. And now, here we are in this media for endless media, on and on and on, this onslaught. How do you stay visible? How do you survive this? So here are some big, you know, small assumptions. We've seen some of this uh, in the lead up to today. Big panicky question, you know, we should use it before it uses us, you know. Uh, are you going to be replaced by a chatbot as, as, a, as a journalist? Um, that's troublesome. But does that make you more valuable because you have a point of view? You are able to, to curate. You're able to offer uh, nuance. Then your premium. Then your value goes up. And if you look into this, you have you know fact-based, low originality, but you know jobs done by AI. And then you have opinion-based, high originality, high empathy, uh, jobs done by humans. Does that make you more premium? The other assumption, the only thing that generative AI can generate is content. What if that isn't true? What if we can, in fact, figure out what it is that our audiences need help with, and this helps us do that by on, by, you know, with scale? What if we could find those problems to solve? Problems like rent. Do I live closer to the school that my kid goes, goes to uh, and pay more rent? Or do I live two hours away and ruin her 
chances of having a good day because we're uh, you know, two hours away in her commute. What do we do about the climate? How do I find a relationship? What do we do about security? What about these problems that we solve? Um, AI could help us ensure workplaces, all of the work that we do that in our journalism, that we're able to actually be inclusive and diverse and representative, maybe at scale. Um, Maggie just told me about somebody she's working with who actually does, uh, can, can use AI bots to figure out harassment online at scale, which is, I think, it's a beautiful view, um, use of, of AI. And then there's this. I mean, conferences unlike this one. Imagine, imagine that. <laughs> what if we never had to do this ever again? Right? Um, somebody in this room can do this. Um, we're back to the single mass audience. The one single monolithic audience, this mythical beast that we must educate. Um, lots of unpopular opinions here. Uh, if you have tomatoes, please don't throw them at me. Um, and maybe we think generative AI means we must educate these poor masses at scale with more journalism. But what if it meant, I know I keep, this is, this is my stuck record slide. What if it meant that it wasn't about content? It wasn't about all of this. It wasn't about who wanted TikTok or younger audiences or Instagram or, you know. Maybe it wasn't about that ever. There's way too much content. Nobody wake, woke up in the morning today and said, man, I wish there was more content out there. <laughs> Um, maybe it's about helping people make better decisions in their lives. Um, and maybe we stop being the content business and we start being this kind of business instead. You know, I can help you with the problems you're talking about. And rather than assume what those problems are, what if we, what if we actually found out from you in a horrible, low-tech, non-scalable way, just through conversations, what do you need? What is it you need? What if we were that service industry we always wanted to talk about, right? What if we did this? What if we found out ways to do this? AI could help. Sometimes just a straight up boring, unsexy conversation would help. We've had a lot of those. People think we're innovation people at Splice. We're not. We're not innovation at all. We're innovation because we say, let's find your audiences, have a coffee with them. Well, that doesn't sound very high tech because it isn't. Jennifer Brandel, I'm looking at you. AE, folks, use actual experiences. Um, how do we think about this? How do we build stuff to figure out what it is that meets their needs, not media? The longest question to ask your audience is, is what media do you want? What content do you want? Do you like podcasts? That's not the point. The point is, what, what are you going through in your life that I can help you with? I'm here to service you in my immense, potent power as a media person. How can I help? And what can I build for you? And how do we build something that's valuable enough to pay for in attention, in time, even money? So, oh, newsflash. Come to my workshop today on exactly how to do this. How do we think about what people want? How do we find out? And how, we, how do we build for? I'm having this, I think it's 1, 2.30. Uh, I could be wrong about the time. Um, but back to the, how do we make this the, the, the democratic cornerstone that it was always meant to be, right? And that's what I'm calling, you know, I'm saying, I'm equating this with that democracy, but how, how about incorporating those democratic practices within the, our practice of journalism? Why are we making assumptions that are unverified, that are unchecked, um, and kind of unilateral? Um, I'm, calling the, I'm calling the here's what you should know business. I'm saying that's not good business. I'm also saying it's not good journalism. Um, and I, I think it's a bit of a journocracy. <laughs> Don't be a Democrat. Um, and that's the end of 
what I have? What, you know, what if we, what if we did this instead? And then we made our entire journalistic careers about this. And then we did it at scale. And we did it over and over again until we were closer to being that, that, that beautiful rare thing which so many of us in this room are, which are journalists that, that, that are in service of the people that, that, that look at them, the people that, that depend on them. Um, they're telling us this everywhere we look. The messages are out there, we've got to read the signals. And that's all I've got. Thank you very much.